I'm going to be talking about SSS, SAS, ASA, and AAS recognition. This leads us into triangle congruency proofs. So we're going to be talking about these four different theorems and how to recognize them from the pictures given. So let's talk about what each of these stand for. These are shortcuts that we use to prove that two triangles are congruent. And to prove that two triangles are congruent, we have to have a certain amount of information in a certain order found on the pictures that are given. SSS stands for side, side, side. So we have to have three congruent sides from each triangle to prove that they're congruent. The next one is side, angle, side. So we have to have two sides and an included angle to prove that two triangles are congruent. The next one is angle, side, angle. So this one we have to have two angles and an included side. And the last one is angle, angle, side. And the other piece of information that you might have forgotten that we use a lot in these triangle congruency proofs is being able to use the reflexive property of congruence. And what that means is if we have two triangles shown here, they share a common side. They share side BD. And BD is the same side, so it's exactly the same size. So that means it's congruent to itself, so we can put a, a dash mark to say that it's congruent. So BD is congruent to BD. And we're going to be using that a lot in these proofs, and you're able to write in that congruency mark because it is a shared side. So let's look at these four different theorems. The first one is SSS. We have to have three sides to prove that triangles are congruent. Well, if we look, we have one set of congruent sides. That's the one hash mark. And we have another set, a second set of congruent sides. But now we have to find a third one. But if we notice, they share a side. And they share that side in the middle. That means we can do our third set of congruency marks. So now we have three sides, three sets of sides that are congruent to each other. So that's side, side, side. The next one is side, angle, side. That means two sides and an included angle. And I call it the sandwich it's because it's sandwiched in between those two sides. Okay? So if we look at this, we have one congruent side, and we have a second congruent side. If we look at this, we also can draw in vertical angles. And this is the only other piece that we're allowed to draw in, and that's the vertical angles. And vertical angles are congruent, so we can put our first set of swoopies for congruent angles. So that is an angle. So if you notice, if we connect these two sides together, the angle is included or sandwiched in between these two sides. So that is your side angle side. Let's look at the next two. Okay. This next one is the angle angle side, and we have two angles and a non-included side. So if we label this, we have one set of congruent angles, a second set of congruent angles, but we also have a shared side, so we can draw that congruency mark in, and that is our shared side. If we connect these two angles, you notice that the side is not sandwiched in between those two, but it's off to the side. Okay, So this is why it's angle, angle, side. The side is beside it, but not in between the two angles. Our last one is angle, side, angle, where the side is sandwiched in between the two angles. So we have one set of angle, second set of angle, and then we have that shared side that is congruent. And if you notice now, that side is definitely sandwiched in between those two angles. And that's why we can call it angle side angle, because it's in between those two. Okay? And we're going to be practicing this. Now, there's one last one that we are not allowed to use. Okay? We're not allowed to use. And I'm going to show you why we can't use it. And you may see it every now and then. 
So if we take a look at this, it says given two sides and a non-included angle, SSA, is not enough to prove congruence. Okay, so if we look at this, so far so good. These two triangles look congruent. We have uh, one swoopy to show that that angle is congruent. Then we have one tick mark to show that that's a set of sides. And then we have two tick marks to show the set of sides. And you go, oh, that's congruent. But we're missing a piece of information. We need to know something about the second triangle. Because if I, if you notice, if I say show the other triangle, we can actually so we can actually move this last side. So we actually need to know the length of the bottom side or the angle of that bottom angle to prove 100% that these two angles or triangles are congruent. So we cannot use SSA. Geometrically, we cannot prove it because we don't have enough information. So if you remember, we cannot use SSA or as it spells ASS because we do not have enough information. So let's practice labeling these pictures and figuring out which theorem we use. OK, let's look at our first one. I see one set of congruent sides. So that's an S. I also see these arrows, which mean those are parallel lines. Whenever I have parallel lines, I highlight the two lines and then the transversal, the one that connects them. And parallel lines give us congruent angles. And where they meet is where those angles are. So now we have a congruent set of angles. And they also share a side. And we can do tick two, two tick marks because that's our second set of sides. So if we look at this, this is going to be a side angle side. All right, let's look at our next, next one. We see uh, one set of sides that are congruent a second set of sides that are congruent, but I also can draw in the shared side that's congruent to itself. And so this one is going to be side, side, side. All right, let's look at some more examples. Our next one, I see one set of congruent sides and one set of congruent angles. But we can also draw in vertical angles, because vertical angles are congruent. And that's our second set of congruent angles. So we put two swoopies. And so that's our second set. So that's another A. And if we look at the placement, if we connect the two A's, the S is not sandwiched in between. So this one has to be angle, angle, side. This one is a tricky one to see. But after you practice, it gets a little bit easier to identify. Let's look at our next one. We have an angle, one set of angles, one set of sides. We also have a side that is shared. But this one spells ASS again, and we cannot have that because that's not enough information. So we write not enough info. Right? Let's look at our last set of examples. Our first one, I see a side, and I see an angle, and then our shared side we can also write in. Now be really careful with this one, because you want to say side, angle, side, but this one is going to be not enough information. And the reason for that is because these two sides are not in the right place. They are not reflected. They are two completely different sides that don't match up. That is not enough information. It doesn't go in the correct order. And if we were to label the bottom triangle, it would spell ASS, -S, and that does not work. So we have to have the same order as well as the correct information. Now, our very last one, I have an angle up here and an angle down here, because if one side is a right angle, the other one's a right angle. And then we also have that shared side right there in the middle. So this one's pretty nice and easy and straightforward, angle, side, angle. The more you practice these, these will get easier.